uh, I'll be discussing about the anatomy of the spirit friends. I think every one of you know that um, I'm like taking the session on the anatomy of the spirit, which is written by Dr. Carolyn Miss. And uh, it was all about how she described about our internal power, what means internal power and what means internal energy and how do we heal ourselves? Because healing is not other's job, it is only our job. And that's what she states like step by step. And that's what I'm like uh, uh, sharing on this book. And um, yeah, we have covered so far the preface and introduction of how she came into uh, the spiritual path, how she combined the holistic and uh, uh, the conventional medicine. And uh, just to brief, she is a journalist and she stopped her journalism. And because she started to see the impressions of the people by just reading the energy and uh, her impressions were so accurate by giving the shape, by giving the knowledge slowly. And she also has suggested that intuition is all, is not a gift. It, we can also develop the intuition and that's what she shares here. And uh, today we will learn the uh, Made in the Image of God chapter. And in this, I'm going to describe about how Carolyn have combined the all three chakra, like all three rituals, like uh, one is from the Eastern side, which is the seven chakras and the symbolic power of the Christian sacraments. And then the tens of roads, which are from Kabbalah techniques. So we will uh, see all these three in this session and the next session we'll see how like she combined the all three um, rituals together and how she combined and shared the truth. So what Carolyn have said is here, initially uh, we always know that power is the internal energy and this energy is always a neutral work and that it represents everyone's relation to God. Either if we are having anxiety issues or fears, everything is stored in our energy system and that's why energy is always a neutral word. And um, so Carolyn, what she did is, as I said before, she did incorporate uh, the spiritual language because she realized without the spiritual language, her energy descriptions, she was unable to describe the energy patterns. And that's where she started to understand the spiritual language and she incorporated this into her energy descriptions after she realized between the Eastern chakras and the Western religious sacraments. And all this happened suddenly in her one of her workshops on energy and anatomy because she was used to guide people. She was used to tell, share the impressions of the people, what has happened to them. But in suddenly in one of her workshops, she got the realization that she needs to teach the people of how they have to heal by themselves. And that's where she started to guide us all the energy patterns uh, in our body. So suddenly, all of a sudden, what happened is she uh, draw like seven circles on the blackboard lined up vertically, which is like uh, representing the power centers of the human en energy system. And then when she saw all of these empty circles, she was struck uh, by the fact that these are not only the seven chakras, but they are also combining the sacraments and also the Kabbalah techniques. And she understood that uh, all these spiritual messages are the same. And what Carolyn also says is our spirits, our energy and our personal power are all one and of the same force. And uh, they instruct us in how to direct the power of life force that run through our systems. 
so which is why these three traditions are very much important for us to understand just be very much open to listen and that's it you don't need to remember anything just will go throughout and slowly slowly you will always by hearing many times you will remember all the uh, all the three traditions together and here the important point what she mentioned is our spiritual task in this life lifetime is always to learn to balance the energies of the body and soul of thought and action of physical and mental power because our bodies always contain a blueprint for our healing and that's why this is also our biological design is also a spiritual design which is also the language of energy and spirit which is used together in our belief systems and uh, here the other thing is like uh, we have woven the divine one way or the other in all aspects of our lives thought forms and actions and this is where we also know like it is like the golden rule which we say because every day we are uh, creating an energy with all our thoughts and actions we are creating our life force and this we have to, i have to say as we become more and more conscious and how uh, and like uh, how we recognize our thoughts and attitudes just like the same our internal life upon our physical bodies we are all able to recognize them and as a spiritual adults we accept responsibility for co-creating our lives and our health so here what the thing is co-creation is a spiritual adulthood and it is the exercise of choice and the acceptance of our responsibility for those choices so we are always responsible for the choices which we are making and also the another point which we have to discuss here is managing our power of choice is the divine challenge always and that's what we have to understand sometimes like we often feel uh, devastated by choosing what what we have to do and that's our challenge and that's the spiritual adulthood which we have to go through here and this is the sacred contract that we are here to fulfill and it begins by choosing what our thoughts and attitudes will be and we are the ones who create our physical bodies through the creative strength of our thoughts and emotions so whereas our choice also meant here the ability to respond to that which god has created for us and uh, uh, that's where we all have to be very much aware and we always have to know that what kind of choices we are making the choices because choices are representing our lives and our health and we are the ones again and again we are responsible for our life and our choices and now uh, the now the um, carolyn describes the sacred truth here uh, about all the three patterns all the three traditions here and uh, let us see in the next slide of the symbolic power of the seven chakras i believe like everyone of uh, know you everyone of you knows the power of the seven chakras here so whereas like each of these energy centers contain a universal and spiritual life lesson that we must learn as we evolve into the higher consciousness so as a person masters each chakra he or she gains the power and self knowledge that become integrated into uh, his spirit advancing him along the path towards spiritual consciousness so as everyone sees here friends once again let me describe about the chakra and the lessons related to that chakra so as you see in the first picture please be aware that in all our chakras we start from the bottom to top so the very first chakra is at the bottom which is called the muladhara chakra which is always the material world 
uh, uh, where we learn the lessons about the material world. And the next one is the Swadhisthana, where we learn lessons about the sexuality, work, and the physical desire. And the third chakra is uh, the Manipuraka, where we learn the lessons of the ego, personality, and self-esteem. And the fourth chakra is Anahata. And uh, we learn here the lessons of love, forgiveness, and compassion. And the fifth chakra is the Vishuddha, Whereas here, the Vishuddha is always like will and self-expression. And sixth chakra is uh, the Agna chakra and it, uh, relate, and it is related to mind, intuition, insight and wisdom. And the Sahasrara is the spirituality. So it's also called the thousand petal chakra. So these are the seven chakras, I believe every one of you know, friends. So today is only the topic of knowing here. We'll just know what are all the seven chakras, seven Christian sacraments and the 10 sifirots. And uh, how we combine all these three are the, we, we will learn in the later workshop. So the next thing is uh, the symbolic power of sacraments. So here, what the word sacrament is, it's, the ritual invoking power of the sacred into the soul and the term so the word sacrament is is called the sign of a sacred and this is where uh, it represents and here sacraments are not only the signs they are also the celebrations of a continued journey and relationship with god with God means, again, God is yourself. Identifying the God within you is nothing but. So it's like the celebrations of a continuous journey and relationship with yourself, I would say. And uh, um, the below are the seven sacraments here. So first, uh, first one is the baptism. Maybe this might be upside down, friends. Uh, please also check in the internet once of what all these are called. So the first one is called the baptism and uh, it explains like to receive or bestow an expression of grace representing the gratitude for one's life in the physical world. So here I would say give an example like consider um, this baptism for instance in which a family accepts the physical and spiritual responsibility for a child that they have brought into the world. And our challenge as a spiritual adults is to accept symbolically, fully and gratefully the family into which we were born. So symbolically, baptism also means honoring your family and yourself by forgiving family members for any pain that they have caused for you during your childhood. And the power contained in such forgiveness is also the power that heals the body. So this is why it is very important for us to understand the core and core principle of each and everything, each and every uh, sacrament here. And the next one is called the uh, communion, which is also called Euch Eucharist. And um, this represents an expression of grace in the form of a host that represents holy union with God and with the people in one's life. And the third one is the confirmation, which is to receive or bestow an expression of grace that enhances one's individuality and self-esteem. And the fourth one is the marriage. This is also one of the good thing that everyone has to know because marriage, which we all think that we, the, we receive and reciprocate love with each other, but here the meaning is more powerful. So here, um, Caroline says that this is a blessing which is making sacred union with oneself, symbolic of recognizing and honoring the essential need to love and care for oneself. And then only one can fully love another. And then the fifth sacrament is confession. So it is to grace, to cleanse one's spirit of negative acts of will. So it's always like cleansing our spirit. And the sixth one is the ordination, which is 
to make the sac sacred one's path of service. And the final one is the extreme unction, which is the grace to finish one's unfinished business, not just before the death, but as part of uh, but as a daily part of one's life, thus allowing a person to love and live in present time. So as Carolyn also said that unfinished businesses, there should be no unfinished business before we leave this planet. So, and here, and this sacrament also says, it's not just like before the death. In every day, we have to be the same. So these seven stages of, per, uh, of personal initiation represent inherent powers that we are meant to actualize and powers that we need consciously to utilize and employ through meeting the challenges that life gives us. And now we will understand about the symbolic power of the 10 sephirots. So here, the 10 sephirots or the tree of life of the Kabbalah comprise a complex teaching that evolved over many centuries. I guess many of you have heard of the term like Kabbalah or the tree of life. So these are all the same. And uh, uh, in the medieval times, the Kabbalah of the 10 Sephiroth describes the 10 qualities of the divine nature. And here the thing is, three of the 10 qualities are partnered with another three. So you see here in the picture, the three of the 10 sephiroths are partnered with another three. And the 10 qualities can actually group in seven levels, often portrayed as a upside down mythical tree of life with its roots in the heaven above. That's why I said to observe in our chakras because our chakras start from the bottom up approach. So the first chakra is always the muladhara, which is at the bottom. Whereas in the 10 sephiroths, the first one is on the top, which is the keter, a keter. And if you see, like there are also the seven layers which are combined. Uh, so if you see in the picture, you will be understanding here comes the 10, uh, 10th sephiroth. And this is the representation of uh, the sephiroths, which is also the tree of life with its roots with its roots in the heaven above. So we will now know about uh, the 10 Sephiroth's friends. So um, these are, the first one is called the Keter. And this is the supreme crown of God, which is representing the path of the divine that inspires a physical manifestation. This Sephira is the most undefined and uh, therefore the most inclusive. There is no identity, no specific, specific in this point of beginning between heaven and earth. And Hokma, Hokma always represents the wisdom. And this Sephira represents the contact point between the divine mind and the human thought, which means through this energy, physical manifestation begins to form, form precedes actual expression. And this Sephira quote in contemporary, this is also called Jungian language, which is also associated with the unconscious energy called the animus. And this one is partnered with the third chakra. As you see here, Hukma is partnered with the third one, which is called Bina. Sorry, I said chakra, no, Sephira. And uh, Bina means understanding and the intelligence of God. Bina is also the divine mother, the womb where all um, is made ready for birth. And this is the animal counterpart of the hukma. You see, like hukma represents the male and Bina represents the female. And that's where these both are combined here. And the next one is the Hest. Hest Sephira the love or the mercy of God, also called the greatness. This sephira is partnered with the fifth sephira called Gevra. And Gevra means, is also known as Din, and which is the call the power, judgment and punishment. Hest and Gevra are considered the right and left arms of the God 
and these two qualities balance each other. And then the sixth sephira is the tiferet, also known as Rahamin. Here we develop compassion, harmony, and beauty, and this sephira is considered as the trunk of the tree. Or to use a compar uh, comparable symbol, it is also called the heart of the tree. And then the seventh one is the neza, which is the endurance of God, which is, uh, it is partnered with eighth sephira, which is called the hod. And these two represents the legs of the body. And now let us know about the hod, which is the majesty of God. So neza and hod form the right and left legs of the God, and they are the source of prophecy. And then the ninth one is Yesod, the phallus, and it is the procreative force of God. So this is the merging energy into the physical form. And this sephira is also known as the righteous one, and which is say, which will say the foundation of the world. And the tenth sephirot is the Shekinah, which is the feminine, the mystical community here. All of um, it has. The female and many female names as well, which is the earth, moon, rose, garden of Eden. And this is the grounded life force, which is feeding all that is alive. So when tenth, when the Tiferet and the Shekna are merged, the human soul awakens and the mystical journey begins. So at that moment, the Sephirot cease to be merely abstract and become as well as detailed roadmap of spiritual development directing the individual of her path of ascent. So friends, these are all the three uh, traditions which Carolyn have described here. And like combining the wisdom of the chakra system with the sacred power, inherit in the Christian sacraments and the divine characteristics articulated in the 10 sephirots gives us the insight into the needs of our spirits and our bodies. And these three traditions serves our spirits and also enhances our bodies. So in this one, we already have discussed about the symbolic power of the seven chakras, the Christian sacraments and the 10 sephirots. So today we will just see how these chakras, how these three traditions work together. So this is the image friends, which, are, which has already been shared in the group. And you can see uh, these are, it is a combination of the three traditions here. And now we will just deep dive uh, into the chapters, how, um, like how these work together. So what I would say is like each of these seven levels have the power in our biological systems, which, uh, which is always a single sacred truth and this truth continuously pulsates within us and directs us to live according to the right use of its power. So we are all born with the knowledge of the seven truths which are deeply, we are living in this, uh, we are having this in our energy system and we also need to always honor these, um, these truths and that's how we have to increase the strength of our spirit and always our physical body. And as I say always in the previous chapters that energy is power and the physical body requires the energy. And therefore that our bodies require power. Power is not a term that we think of uh, having like uh, getting the first rank or being high in a position. It's not that. Ha being Having a power in your body means that you are having a healthy living style with your thoughts, you are having a very good thoughts and you are, uh, you are continuously connected uh, intuitionally. So this is what a power represents. And here, all the three th traditions speak of interacting with the power. And we also need to think that every choice we make, either uh, by faith or fear, it always directs our spirit. So in case if anyone directs our spirit in faith, the grace always returns to the energy field. And this is what we are always are. If a fear uh, comes, then ultimately we are also returning the fear energy 
uh, to the field and also to the body and the body is also getting disturbed so that is why it is always important for us to always honor these truths and always have the good thoughts and uh, in the eastern traditions like every action uh, creates a karma act of awareness creates very good karma and uh, in the christian tradition of sacrament uh, of confession is the act of retrieving one spirit from the negative places in order to enter the heaven in a form of complete state so we also have discussed that uh, you know in the beginning of slides that there is a athabaskan teacher which is named as rachel and she said like uh, if we think our thoughts are not good or the or we are having the negative patterns the only step she has said is like we have to call back always the our spirit and then we have to cleanse our spirit and then again we have to start from the scratch like uh, we have to walk on a straight path just like the same these are all also explained here and we are simultaneously the matter and spirit and in order to understand um, ourselves and be healthy in the body and spirit so we have to understand how the matter and spirit interact what draws the spirit of life force out of the bodies and how we can retrieve our spirits from the false gods of fear anger and attachments to the past and again here i have to say that every attachment we hold on out of fear commands a circuit of our spirit to leave our energy field and this biblical phrase is called breathe on breathe life on to earth and what fuels your spirit always fuels your body and then here um the other have also carolyn have also said the truths that these three thread uh, spiritual traditions and the principles of the medical intuitions are the first thing we always have to misdirect the power of one spirit which will generate the consequence to one's body and life and the next one is every human being will encounter a series of challenges that test their allegiance and these tests will always come in the form of disintegration of one's physical power base which is the inevitable loss of wealth or the family health or power and the loss will activate a crisis of faith forcing one to ask what is it or who is it that i have faith in or into those whose hands have i committed my spirit and apart from such major losses the trigger that causes people to seek the deeper meaning and psychological and spiritual ascension is usually a physical disorder to that creates a personal or professional earthquake so this is why it is very important for us to always understand like what the challenges are bringing and what is the lesson that we have learned through those challenges and the third one is so we should always be willing to release the past and as i said in the athabaskan culture of the word from the word rashel we also have to cleanse our spirit and again we should return to the present moment so in all these three traditions the physical world serves the learning of our spirits and the tests we encounter there follow a well ordained pattern and if you see in the chakra system in the picture each energy center warehouses a particular power and this power ascend from the densest physical power to the most etheric or the spiritual power and as you see the chakras the first three are the lower chakras and then the final four are the top four are the higher chakras which we all know my dear friends and now we will go through the seven sacred truths as you see here i have divided i have created this chart where we can see on the level 1 we have the muladhara chakra and baptism and shekna from sephiroth where all the purpose of this three is all in one which means here the thing is like we are all we are interconnected with all of life to one another 
And each of us must learn to honor this truth. And by connecting to this energy, we can connect to this truth. And the other thing is also that we have to learn that this, the, this truth is all in all is one. And this is in our biological family. And accepting and acting according to the basic truth, all is one, is a universal spiritual challenge. And here I have to say, for example, the Sephira of Shekhinah, who, uh, whose name means the divine presence, which is also the divine consciousness that creates and protects the mystical community of Israel. And Shekinah is also the doorway into the divine, which means one who enters must enter through this gate, gateway. So the we now know about the level two, which is like the merging of the partnership between the Swadhisthana Chakra, the sacrament of the communion, and the Sephira of Yasod. Sorry, uh, just one second, friends. I wanted to have a pointer. Yes. And the Sephira of Yesod. And the power created by these three archetypal forces transmits our system, the sacred truth, which is called the honor one another. From the partnership chakra, we receive the power to act with integrity and honor within all our relationships from marriage to friendship to all the professional bonds. And this energy is particularly active because it resonates in all the financial and creative activity. And again, integrity and honor are necessary for health. So this is what we learned from the level two friends. Here we should also really uh, be important of what kind of relationships we are having. And uh, that, and we have to understand that everyone in our life plays a role essential to our development. And our challenge is to become mature enough to recognize and live by this truth. And uh, for example, here the Sephira of Esod embodies the second chakra or the communal energy. So Esod is the phallus, the procreative need to sow seeds of life which is to also create matter out of energy and form out of potentiality. And we are all spiritually driven to connect with the sacred within other people to merge souls with a partner. And now we will see the third chakra. I believe like every one of you are very much aware of all the chakras. So that is why I'm more concentrating now on this session in uh, for the sacraments and the sephirots. And later on, we can also see all the principles of our chakras in a very much detailed level. So I would like to suggest only to listen uh, and just try to observe the connection between all the three traditions. And the level three is the merging of the personal power, which is from the Manipuraka Chakra, the Sacrament of Confirmation, and the Sephirod of Hod and Neza. As you see in the previous picture, for example, here uh, in this level three, there are the two Sephirods, which is Hod and Neza. And this is what it is saying here on the level three. And here, what the thing we have to learn is like honoring oneself. So this is the, the level three is the personal power. And here we have to learn to honor oneself. And all four of these forces at this level direct us to develop the self-esteem and self-respect. And this chakra contains our survival intuition. And the symbolic meaning of the sacrament of confirmation is the acceptance of responsibility, for what we become as a person. And part of this process of becoming conscious of ourself is an in initiation. And here we have to say that there is no health 
without honor. The symbolic meaning of the sephira of Niza is endurance, which is also called the power to maintain strength and stamina beyond the capacity of physical body alone. And the symbolic meaning of the hoard is integrity, an energy that allows us to transcend the limitations of self and awaken our spiritual connection. So I hope you are all understanding, friends. So the thing is, together, the neza and hoard are the symbolic legs of the human body. So these are these also represents the feminine and masculine energies of the third chakra. And they suggest the need to create a spiritual union out of internal duality and we have to learn here honoring oneself in this level 3. And in the level 4 we'll be seeing that the magic of the emotional power. So we have seen here personal power and next comes the emotional power which is the chakra called Anahata Chakra, the sacrament of marriage and the Sephira of Tikrit. And here what we have to learn is love is divine power. So this energy of this chakra communicates us to the knowledge that love is the only authentic power. And symbolically, the sacrament of marriage brings into our lives the need and responsibility to explore love. And as I said in the previous session, first, when it comes to marriage, we first need to marry ourselves by loving ourselves. And then only this love will be transmitted or understood by, the, by your partner. So without the marriage with yourself, the marriage do not happen with others. This is what that we have to learn in this uh, sacrament and the sephira of Tiferet, symbol, uh, symbolic of the heart and sun within the human body. And also this pulsates into each of the energies of compassion, harmony and beauty, which are the tranquil qualities of love. So we are by nature compassionate beings who thrive in an atmosphere of tranquility and harmony. These energies are essential to physical health as well as the emotional development and acts of the heart. So this one always triggers the heart chakra. And then we are having the level five, which where we think of the willpower here. So personal power, emotional power, willpower. And in this we have the Vishuddha Chakra, the Sacrament of Confession, and the Sephirot of Hest and Gevra. Again, here there are two Sephirots which are acting. And the power that we have to learn the sacred truth is to surrender personal will to the divine will. Which means every one of us have some awareness that we are born for a specific purpose, that life contains a divine plan. The fifth chakra is the center for that awareness and for our desire to make a contact with the divine plan. And as we become mature, like we always will try to build our lives according to our own will. First, like we separate uh, ourselves from the parents and then we establish our career, we become independent. And then, you know, even when the crisis come on, uh, comes on, we, we are the ones who are facing these situations. But regardless of all this crisis, we, find, we have to find ourselves in a situation that forces us to confront the limitations of our inner resources, which also prevents us successfully completing our own plans. And also here, some of the questions will always be coming like, what am I meant to do with my life? What was my purpose in this life? So when you have all these questions, you are already acting in this level five, which is the personal willpower. And that one choice made in faith and trust allows the divine authority to enter our lives and reorder our struggles into the success. 
and our wounds into strengths. I will repeat once again. We always have to make the choices based on the faith and trust. And this allows to enter our lives and reorder our struggles into success and our wounds into the strengths. And spirit and body alike require honesty and in integrity to thrive. And for this reason, we always need to uh, get rid of ourselves from all the uh, distortions that we have created by ourselves. And we have to correctly use the use our willpower. And as I once again said from Athabascan culture here, cleansing the spirit is one of the most essential step in this healing process. And when this starts, you are already in the level five stage. And from the uh, Sephira of Hest, that we, which means the greatness and love. And communication using this quality of energy is effortless. And we always have to speak the truth to release the words that hurt others, contaminate both the other person and also ourself. And our physical body uh, is responsible for this form of destruction. And that is why in Buddhism, they say, this is the percept of right speech. So the Sephira of Gemura means judgment and power, which transmits into our energy system the awareness that we should never intentionally judge any other person or ourself. So there is a lot, lot and lot of deeper meaning between these two sephirots. And as we go one step ahead, there is more uh, deeper sides. So there, is, there should be absolutely no judgment and hist means we always need to think what kind of words we are speaking and what kind of words we are always speaking also to others. So in the level six, this is the mind where it acts on the mind, which is the uh, Agna Chakra, the ordination and the Sephirot of Bina and Hokma. Here, the truth that we have to learn is, again, seek only the truth. And from the mind chakra, we receive the energy to search for the answers, like why? And what to know more today than I have done yesterday, for example. So this kind of thoughts continuously come to us and, and, and our energy will be pulsating. So what the thing is, like uh, this continuously directs us to evaluate the truth and integrity of our beliefs. So we will all um, encounter the circumstances that change, that cause us to change our beliefs and thereby we become more and more one step closer to the truth. And the more mature we become with our beliefs, step by step, experience after experience, the energy from the sixth chakra will be relently, uh, relentlessly pushing us to let go of all the perceptions which are untrue, which are not true. So the, another act here is letting go, letting go of all the perceptions. And the sacrament of ordination in the literal sense is the act of being made a priest and officially taking up the life task of channeling the sacred. And which is also, uh, we can say that the right livelihood. And uh, here we have to understand uh, to help us like connect with the divine energy and action, the Sephira of Hokma transfer into our systems, the impulse, to invoke our divine wisdom into our reasoning abilities. Particularly, our logic should be not judged. It seems to not lead anywhere. And supporting the energy of Hukma is the Sephira of Bina, which is again pulsating into the often hard-edged energy of human resonating, the softer, which is more emotionally linked power of divine understanding. So these two sephiras is meant to serve 
as an internal guidance system and human reasoning can never never answer the mysteries of our lives and it can never explain the complexity of why things are happening as they are so always we have to let go and just come back to the truthful state and that we have to trust that all behind all events no matter how painful there is a reason from which good can come and then there is the level 7 which is the highest level uh, which is the spirit form and where it has uh, the combination of sahasrara chakra the sacrament of extreme unction and the sephira of kitar and this truth means live in the present moment which we are all discussing and living in this level 7 as we are all the meditators we know this truth and we are all living in this level 7 so let us say uh, go into detail of this one so this spiritual this spirit chakra tells us that our spirits are always eternal we are more than our physical bodies and our bodies apparently have a relation uh, to the chronological time which is only an illusion and our spirits are drawn instinctively to the sacred truth from it we can receive the inspiration that lifts us into ecstasy and uh, when our spirits become stronger than our bodies likewise our bodies can respond to the commands of our spirits the need to live in the present moment is supported by the sacrament of extreme unction and this sacrament was created to help people release their spirit prior to death and this also means here whoever is having the unfinished business at various points of your life you will call back your spirit and you have to complete all the unfinished job and then only you release your spirit and this energy of the sacrament gives us the ability to also release our past experiences and the power and symbolism of this sacrament is therefore not limited merely to the end of life and we always have to think that the life moves on and we have to live only in the present state and from the sefira of kitar the symbolic of our connection to the world of the infinite we receive the knowledge that there is no death there is only life no one has gone before us whom we will not meet again that is a divine purpose we are meant to rest in the comfort and power of this sacred truth and finally we are born knowing all these seven sacred truths we just only need to understand them and we only need to trust and we need to bring our attention to each and in, uh, every chakra and have to understand what is happening in our body and also in, uh, on our thoughts so we are the ones who need to shift our attention and just only um we have to drastically cut the external world at some point of the time and bring in more in attention to the internal and then only we will be learning the symbolic side so this is all my dear friends where uh, we have combined the chakra sacraments and sephirot so all all the traditions are having again the same principle so we will also learn uh, more in more detailed way in the next uh, weeks um, on the seven chakras in detail terms of how they inherit their power and what are the advantages and how do we heal and what are the levels that we have to act on our body so these are this is all for today friends i know this is a bit long session but i just wanted to complete and thank you all for the patience that uh, you are listening mm-hmm.